Okay, so for the uh, assembly of the Oscillab system, here is a video uh, for the instruction to complement the PDF that you can find in the GitHub repository. So in this PDF that I hope you have printed, in the first time that on the first page you got some useful resources that are needed to, to look at that will teach you about reprinting and all software you will need uh, during this assembly and also later to uh, use the device and eventually modify and improve it. So about reprinting, if you were to purchase a reprinter, I would also advise you to purchase one in kit so because the skills that you will learn during this, this assembly will be useful for later. Okay, so the parts, you can print them uh, using uh, OpenSCAD, so in the first time you need to find them, they are in STL format in the GitHub repository, normally it should be straightforward, and uh, they can be printed on, um, on a precise 3 MK2, normally there is no support, there is no printing setting in particular, uh, it's enough to make, to make them functional, so here is an example of one, this is uh, X motor, and there is a few, there is about 10 of less than 15 pieces to print. Okay, then uh, for the bill of material, we focused on, uh, on keeping it minimalist as much as we could. It was not always possible, of course, but uh, because some parts like the ink shield or the LEDs for UV were not easy to, easy to find. And uh, for all the screws, normally it's very simple, and we use. Uh, you should find them in your local, in your local workshop. There is two different screws, Phillips or uh, X, that you can use. This is written in the bill of material which one you need to use. And normally there is also price estimation and uh, a recommended seller where we bought it during the during the development. Okay, first part is the frame. So I will not make the assembly here. Uh, I have it finished because it take it take about 30 minutes, one hour to make it. And uh, there is during this assembly there is a nut that you need to put in the good position. So to know where are the good positions, the best really is to use the OpenSCAD file and to uh, to use the full view module with the uh, from argument, which will give you the uh, the 3D view, and then you can turn around and really see where you will need later to put a screw and then where you need to put a nut here. So here they are a little bit everywhere, it's finished. And uh, this aluminium profile is I find it very very nice strategy because it's it's stiff, it's really strong. Okay, here it is from the front. And the Y axis. No. We have um, why? Why it is? Can you see? It's good here. So, so all uh, the two axes, they are using uh, B rings, so linear B rings, and belt for the movement. So this is uh, this one is already part assembled. That's uh, the wide moving part with the housing and the B rings that are inside. So we insert the rod. Normally, it's fairly easy. Okay, and on this step, be be gentle. Otherwise, depending of the, depending of the price of your uh, the price of your bearing, if you buy them in China, they could be of low quality, and therefore the ball will will leave, and you will have to buy a new one or find better quality. Uh, also for the rod, we used a uh, stainless steel rod, 8 mm, 250, 8 mm diameter, 250. We used stainless steel because previously we used classic one and uh, we had rust in the laboratory because of solvents that are going around. So here is the belt. Now I need to... Okay, we start by the motor. So. Uh, that's the epsilon motor, and it's like this. Now coming. So to link the motors and to the uh, to the motor holder, it's M310 screws with X uh, X head. 
four volts in them. So I already put the pulley on the on the system. You can see the position of the pulley here. Normally, it's yeah. No, in this for this one, you cannot move it after. But depending on the pulley you buy, you could move it after. Uh, anyway, there is big chance that you will end up at the beginning to mount and dismount uh, the device for the calibration or to make it uh, better. The epsilon end now. In this case, we need to put. So I need to think. Um, this one is going like this, and like this, and then below uh, this. Um, so this one with uh, this piece will hold the um, will hold uh, hold the bed to the absolute moving. And there is a sense to put it, so in this case, really, again, look inside the, uh, inside the open scat folder to see how it's done. So, it will be like this. Yes. And, again, you will probably have to dismount it one or two times to get it straight. So, the screws here here I put the bearing inside the epsilon end. You can see it here now and the bearing is inside. Well we don't see it, but here it is. And it's held by the M3 screw. Now we go back the other way. The belt around the pulley in the motor. And we go here. And it is, uh, it is like this. So there is three, uh, two other screws that are for the for the M3 inside the, the Y moving. All the other screws are for uh, for the M4 that will lead, that will hold the the housing for the linear bearing and this one Normally here, uh, normally the, the belt are not tightened, so this part could be done once the system is in place. But because I mounted and dismounted several times the system, now it's they are already ready to tighten. It could deepen. It's just it's not so complex. If you know. So, here it is. 
here it is. And we can see that it's, it's straight. And also very important when you mount it is that you check, we'll check it later in the, in the machine, but you check that it's moving without friction. This is very, very important. If it moves with friction, we, you will have problem later, your, your motor will simply not move. Uh, okay, that's for this part. And then we have also the end stop. So end stop is to tell the machine at the beginning, um, uh, at the beginning of the run of, of an identical step, the machine will move, look for the zero, so she knows where to where to go in the in the next place. And when you will tell her to go in position five centimeter in one axis, she will be able to go exactly in this position. So we assemble later to the frame. That was for the axis. Oh, and also, so something I didn't show. That uh, so this is the uh, epsilon moving, and we have also the uh, plate holder. So this plate holder is versatile. We have different design in the open scale, and you can still modify it for five by ten plate, ten, uh, 10 by ten plate. And here we have some little magnets that are inserted inside. So uh, the dimension exact of the magnet is in the bill of material, and it will directly come here. And we have some uh, arrester here and inside, so it's fairly elegant to put it in and out. Here it is for the y-axis. Now we shift to the x-axis. Uh, I think I've got everybody. Yes. So my belt, a few screws. Uh, I should get this one. So when you mount it, for the epsilon axis is okay when you mount and dismount, but for this one, it's not. So what I kept was just a zip tie. This is what we use in both cases for tightening. So, so we use uh, we use a zip tie and it's simple. It, it's cheap. Someone could find a better solution, but it's working. So now, firstly, uh, the epsilon end. Where is my screw? So M330, I think M320 um, could work also. So uh, the bearing, uh, 623 bearings, I got them in and they are bolt. And just get the bolt in the other side and I'm good to go. So I don't tighten completely all the bolts during the plantation to go faster. Uh, that's for the end, this for the motor. So it's the same principle. Uh, there is a direction to put the to put the cable in the good in the good direction. Once again, worst case you will dismount it and do it again to put them in the better one. So it needs to face up like this. And again M310 screws. So the motor I use during, uh, for the machine are NEMA 14. Uh, they are a bit more difficult to source than the NEMA 17 that are very, uh, very easy to find on yeah, most websites and that are the motor of predilection for very perhaps the printer. But NEMA 14 allow me to be slightly smaller and, uh, and it's better for the miniaturization. So here is the motor assembled, we have the end. Uh, a word about the, about this part. This is the uh, uh, X carriage. So I took this piece directly from uh, RevRap 3D printer. I didn't redesign it because it was it was working very well. So you could use the device to 3D print. Well, you don't 3D print because you have only two D's. And here we have uh, this is the carriage holder that will be used later for. To hold the, the inkjet cartridge, so this is the inkjet cartridge that we buy. There is a link in the instruction to buy them uh, in bulk, second hand, to 
go cheaper if you buy them new it's uh, it's about 10 euros pitch each and it just slide in like that so what we do is that we cut them uh, we cut them with a saw we remove the ink remove the sponge clean them correctly and we put the chemical after so they they slide in fairly easily uh, for the this carriage we have the um, this part here contains the bolt uh, the bolt inside they are the bolt here are blocked behind the carriage holder and there is uh, so it's m4 bolt and there is m2 blocking it with the same principle on the other side and in the design the screw and the head the bolt and the head of the screws are inside the plastic so that it's really flat and and it's working fairly stiff so the way this one is attached uh, it will be like this like this m420 screws and i put only two i could put four but uh, the design with four is for uh, for a 3d printer where the extruder can be much heavier than what we got uh, what we got in our case which is just a carriage and weight a few grams so we don't need four screws uh, go in And now it's attached. Okay. So link everybody. Again, we take our rods, put them delicately in. Um, we are like this, like this. Before the belt, here is the system, and now I will attach the belt. So the belt and belt tightening is always something tricky, in my opinion. Uh, okay, so you go here. I didn't cut it, but and here we have a system like this. So I don't tighten it. I, I do it later, but you should understand how, how it's working. And normally you have this belt come back here, and here you put a zip tie. Okay, for the x-axis, and finally also we have. Uh, the end stop that is here and that will come uh, well, here. Here it is, from behind, so it's touched when we go. So we have the x axis, we have the epsilon axis, and now we will put them in the front. Assembly. So uh, let's start with the epsilon axis, which we go. So there is a direction here. You can see that in the front, well, little wall on this main, uh, there is. This is where the door is, and that's how we close the system. We 
you just slide this door here, and that's, that's the front. And so for the epsilon axis, we want. And I made a mistake. I put the X motor in the wrong direction. The epsilon motor in the wrong direction. Here we are, and it will go like this. After what we take, I think the so. I think this uh, M M516, what it should be written. Of course it's not. And um, and yeah. So we go and send this guy away. Okay. Hey, it's this. I did it yesterday, so they are well uh, the nuts are well placed, hopefully. It could be a bit difficult also. Nothing will be done. Yeah, but this one is not. Here we are. So it's in place. And it's moving. It's not so great here. And we hit the stop, there's no friction and it's working. Here is for the epsilon axis, now the X1 go like this. This and the same story. Uh, where is my box?
I will be in front of the camera. Maybe. Here we go. And here. So, so far I didn't place them exactly in position because that's really for the phase of calibration later or to know how high we put this axis I will just put it as high as I can for me or I need somehow okay. I just put them here the idea in height for the x-axis is to be as close as possible from the plate because if you with the inlet if you are too high you don't uh, you got more satellite drops and the printing is less uh, less sharp. So this is one normally we do the tightening for this one. And it's it just like this. And we fix it with a zip tie again. And now it's tight. I don't fix it yet. It's very tight. It's very good. And it slides without friction again. So, here, now we have the X and the Y axis assembled. So, next part is to set the electronic. So, we start, start with the camera. So, same. I have it half mounted. Uh, this is a camera block. We have the Raspberry Pi camera here, which is held with M2 screws uh, to the plastic part. We have below the uh, UV LED, which is held also with M2 screws to the to the plastic part. The exact specification of where are the screws for this one, because uh, we made it in our in our workshop. Uh, so it's not for sale. You will, uh, yeah, you will find the information inside the instruction. And then we have a longer cable here because the electronic can be... Uh, uh, the, uh, the default cable is not long enough to reach the electronic where I replaced it. So the camera go on top. We still have trouble uh, with the angle and of the camera, this should be uh, corrected in the software more than more than in the hardware. I'm not so sure, so it's still it's still in progress on this aspect. Here we have the camera. Then uh, everybody is here. Then we have the electronic block. So this is where stuff happen. We have the Raspberry Pi here, which with the SD card, power supply, HDMI output. It's, you cannot access the HDMI output here, as well as uh, Ethernet, USB, and USB. And if you know the Raspberry Pi, you got also the GPIO here, the Neural Purpose Input Output, that we don't use in our project, but you may find it useful. And there is the camera, uh, the camera input output that no, just input that is here. Uh, what do we have next? Then next we have the Arduino and the ramp that are that are uh, screwed here. So the ramp has a 12 volt input here. So this board can this system can use only 12 volt 5 ampere. It's enough. Then we have a USB that is talking directly to the to the Raspberry. Uh, what we use in this system is that we use only two of the five uh, stepper motor capabilities of the board for the X axis, which is here, for the epsilon axis, which is here. The end stop goes here. Here we have temperature sensors that we don't use. But what we use a lot is the auxiliary, uh, the auxiliary input outputs that are here. We use just them for output. That will control. There are different pins that we use to control then the ink chill board and uh, the LED board that we made according to the instructable. Uh, the link is in the instruction also. So those are very important to talk to the ink shield and to the LED. Okay. 
and uh, and then we have also this 12 volt that is going here. So normally I advise to to have the schematic of the board printed to know where it is. In the description there is also some other pictures of uh, that we took from 3D printing uh, that tell you where are the end stop uh, plug, where are the X stepper motor plug, etc., etc. So there is a lot of other capabilities in this board that we don't use, but that's why we choose it because there is much more, much more capabilities for heating, for servo motors, etc. Even for laser heating, we could use it. So this board now will come here on top, but before in the frame. So the frame we use uh, on top are just classic black. I don't know what exactly. What is the material? is a Protex light something. But uh, the exact design are in the GitHub repository in the frame folder. Normally it should be possible to reproduce it. It is, in our case, it was, uh, there was no, no light leak that we observed. Uh, it could be better, of course, but for us it was enough. So I set this up and here we have just a little uh, in both, we have a little opening here and here that, uh, for the cable to pass. It's a two by one, it's a bit tight, but that's enough. So I will not do the cable management during um, during this video because there is other pictures and instruction inside the uh, inside the PDF. So it's it's normally enough, and I will put a nice picture of the cable management once it's finished. But uh, you get the idea. But I will not also close the other file because you also get the idea. And here we have the system finished. And what? Well, as finished as we can go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One, two, three.